Got a tail creeper. First time she's been paired. Not a bad clutch. There's a few slugs in there. But there's also several, well, plenty of really good eggs. Absolutely made up. What a little darling. Look at that. She's still got scars from breeding with a big male. Absolutely wonderful. First eggs of the year, 2024. What an amazing species. Mm, probably going to be 110 to 120 days before these eggs hatch. That's a long way, but we'll see. So look at those. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 14 slugs. They're all infertile. What a waste. But one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Fertile. So, you know, 50 50. I'm happy with that for the first time ever. She's survived egg laying. She's laid eggs well. She's not got egg bound. And we've got fertile eggs. <laughs> So today we say goodbye to one of our two breeding pairs of Vietnamese blue beauty snakes, the bluest female, beautiful big male, sadly going into blue, big chunky boy, but certainly not looking his best. So my colony of four that <laughs> get off, that live together is now going to be a pair. Someone else is getting a real treat, look how blue that is. Really doesn't do it justice in this line. Beautiful. Vietnamese blue beauty snakes. <laughs> Grumpy one in blue. Something I do love to see, it's the nettles, the young nettles poking up from spring. In fact, all the hedgerow plants at this time of the year, despite it being horrible weather, I'm sorry about the wind noise again, but it's spring is coming. It's just not so noticeable because we're kind of not enjoying it so much, but absolute habitat for invertebrates. Similarly, the mullein, beautiful tall spikes of yellow flowers, grows on any well-drained soil, even just gravel. Food for the mullein moth caterpillar, and actually a herbal remedy for humans. Welcome to the vlog. It's spring, I think, spring for one day. Now, Lily and I, we're going for a walk in the woods. We're gonna go bug hunting and see what we can see. It feels like spring, it's the evening now. Raymond Robinson is sending me some more, cute wind noise. Some more wind, some more wind. <laughs> you better not, I don't want his bottle of wind. But he's sending me some more mini bees. And that means we need some twigs with lichens on and we need some dead leaves off the woodland floor to feed those mini bees on. So we're going to go and see what we can find in the woods with a little hey. rascal. What are you doing down there? Who's that? Yeah, the rascal indeed. See you in a minute, guys. Hello. Maybe we should give her an iPad instead. <laughs> now these are celandines. They're not buttercups. They come out really early. A good sign of spring in the woodland. They close it up. They like to open up when the sun's shining. But celandines, not buttercups. Yeah. What is it? Ah, <laughs> oh, little woodlouse. It's getting away. about to fly.
fly Wurzel. Emily, tell us something about him. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you just sprung that on me. I don't know what to say now. Um, well, he's been flying really well so far uh, since he's come out of his, his winter rest. Um, enjoying the bit of breeze. I hope he'll fly well today. In right. the breeze, little bit of breeze we got. Right, we're going to see. So you guys, Easter Sunday, Easter Monday, and then every weekend until October, you've got a good chance of seeing this bird fly, especially if it's windy weather when you get here. We'll see what he does. For goodness sakes, guys, get on holdenby.com. Learn all about our Easter openings and our weekend openings. There's just so much to see here. Come on out. I even believe the house is open on Easter Monday. A rare chance to look around this historic, historically important house at Holdenby. But for now, let's see if the American Bald Eagle will show you what he's made of. But he does like a bit of breeze and that gets him airborne without too much effort indeed. We don't want him sitting in the trees. Oh, good boy. That was his bad habit last year, was to chill out and sit down and just relax instead of doing a great display. So guys, you can see this for yourselves. An American Bald Eagle, trained here at Icarus Full Career at Holdenby, and Animal Encounters. This is the place to be. <laughs> for your Easter weekend. The eagles are anything. What about owls? Like Galileo here. The great grey owl. So some of the frogs born from home. We're gonna pop in here at the Falkery Centre. So that on our open weekends that start on Easter Sunday and Monday. Kids and grown-ups can see the difference between this frog spawn and some of our toad spawn. Because most grown-ups have no idea what the difference is. So open top, low down, children can come and stare into these barrels, see the aquatic life, whether it's bloodworms, daphnia, or developing frog and toad tadpoles all the way across amongst all our other stuff you can see here what else we're going to be putting outside in the barrels is our toads last year they spawned well out here let's see what they'll do this year now believe it or not toads are not tied to water maybe so much as a frog they don't like living in water they live away from water they're quite dry and they migrate sometimes miles to get to their breeding pools so lots of pond weed and shallow container because they can actually drown especially if males compete too much to get onto the females how could it croak in underwater so toads and frog spawn all for people to see not on an ipad right now no cherry blossom but it won't be long no cherry blossom avenue but something else of course you might spy is our map turtles just chilling out hoping for some sunshine at Easter not just the giant tortoises of course so the black-headed python breeding pair of mine went to a new home a guy that only specializes in breeding Australian pythons and Emily and I are now going to catch up this young beautiful pair of peregrines and they're going to a guy that a hobby breeder that loves his birds of prey and there's a beautiful, beautifully large breeding chamber set up for these guys. So, yeah, we're not designed and set up to breed birds here at the Fulcrum Centre. Neither do I want to. It's not the place to breed them, really, when the public are everywhere. Um, due to the way the aviaries have to be kept and so on for breeding. Very different to, on display to the public. So they're going to someone that's going to appreciate them more. And we'll fly a youngster this year. Bit of sun on this outdoor enclosure, looking great, bit of woodland edge, but no sign of the common lizards yet. Fingers crossed, they've hibernated okay. So around the back of the Falkery Centre, in our own little private a bit. Dad's been up today, and although we netted this, a lot of the conker leaves got in here. And Dad's been up and he's, he's netted it out, and he said, cool, it's full of common newts, and brimmed full of two species of dragonfly larvae. So not good if you're a baby newt, but certainly great that the dragonflies breed in both of our ponds here at the Fulcry Centre. 
um, because who doesn't like to see dragonflies whizzing around in the summer? A bit later in the week now. Cold wind, but yeah, it feels like a spring day. Birds are singing, the sun's out. It looks like pretty much all the grass snakes and viperines are out now. Oh, I think that's one of the females. First time I've seen that female. The weather is warming. And really now we need a few more days of this warm weather. So they get up to their sort of met metabolic rate, their speed, their body's functioning properly. So we can get some food into them. And they'll be in feeding mode. And of course, warm enough with the sun to digest that food. Looking lean, but then they've not eaten for half a year nearly. Shooting season long since finished. The pheasants are now kind of getting a bit tame again. They're getting used to people and the lack of shooting. So lots of showing off, they've seen me now. But beautiful things, always good to see. The really big shoots, some shoots have hundreds of thousands of pheasants on them. Uh, quite destructive to a lot of the smaller wildlife if you like your reptiles and stuff. But here, everything's a balance far more work done to improve wildlife than the impact on the wildlife from the pheasant shoot for sure. Lovely to see. A lot of people don't realise that pheasants aren't a native species. They're not a, not a British animal. They're introduced for sporting purposes hundreds of years ago. But certainly beautiful creatures. Ironically, the clever ones, the fit ones, the lucky ones have survived the shooting and then they do a lot less showing off on the road outside the Fulcrum Centre and get run over. Blooming with the peregrines have gone off to their new home. This that we've put new frontage on last week. My friend Mr. Stiff, yes, that is his name. Mr. Stiff is going to come and re roof that tomorrow. So we'll have the lugger falcon in there. We want to present the lugger falcon much better than really we have done and get the signage up in front because the really important thing is the is Project Lugger helping these birds in the wild. We're ambassadors for that, or at least the falcon itself is. So we want to sort of sell that conservation more to the public. Land a falcon there, lug a falcon there. Should look so good. cool, but a lovely spring evening. Lovely time of day to be at the falconry centre. Everyone's gone home. The birds are totally relaxed. They've had their daily exercise. They've had their food. They're just chilling out. The wild birds are singing down the evening. Spring is in the air. Little owls catching the rays. Owls may be mostly nocturnal as a group, but owls really love sunbathing. They really do. Certainly that late, late afternoon sunshine, just like we do. So my friend's been sorting out signage for us. Uh, lots more signage to come before we open next weekend. But if you followed the vlogs or the channels before, how different does this look? There's no lighting on there at the moment. These are still got to be cleaned up for opening, but do you know what? How much more beautiful and professional and interesting does good quality signage make? Absolutely fantastic. I'm made up with that. Remember, this is all recycled material in here. Yeah, that's going to look so good once they're aquascaped out, ready for the opening. Just a little snippet of what you're gonna see here at Easter. So much to see, stall holders, gardens, historic house on Monday, full crew center, wildlife menagerie, animal encounters, birds of prey displays, staff that are always happy to chat and just a beautiful place to be. Since viral hemorrhagic disease hit the rabbit population in Northamptonshire and most of England about 10 years ago, the rabbit population went from, yeah, down to about 99% losses. So almost no rabbits. He's very noisy. Almost no rabbits in Northamptonshire and much of England. Pockets of them are now really doing well again in Northamptonshire. But here at Holdenby, 
there's a complete hunting ban on them no one's allowed to touch them these are important food they might be introduced hundreds of years ago but they're an important part of the ecosystem so they're untouchable they're here we need them to grow in numbers but there are hardly any and yet in a falconry center full of birds of prey what have i just seen but a baby rabbit <laughs> there it goes Meow. in the falconry center oh bless it and it can fit through a small gap crazy where's it come from what's it doing here who knows but it will be safe from the birds and i absolutely love seeing wildlife here at icarus falconry whether it's a dragonfly larva in the pond the pheasants in the orchard or rabbits as well the squirrels are annoying but hey they're beautiful so here he is mr stiff he's doing well <laughs> halfway there looking good that stuff's a lot heavier than you'd think as well but soon to be while sue's been adding to the borders the whole point being it soften all these sheddy type buildings all these aviaries softening up the corners and blending them in getting this place a more natural looking and softer looking really very windy today all the overwinter dead heads and dead seeds stalks and so on and so forth are taken out from this butterfly border now by sue you can see all the young stuff now growing back up and that's all been put on a compost heap so all those overwintering ladybirds and earwigs and spiders they're not on the fire or buried in the ground they've still got a chance to survive and that's why you need to leave those dead heads on there they actually harbour a lot of overwintering invertebrates all done time to put lyra the lana falcon into her newly refurbished house but nice what do you think very nice well like i say there's nothing we can't do no that's really good and the bird don't care look at that not bothered at all <laughs>